Hello, it is Monday, May 1st, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle, which is nice because we've had some tricky crosswords recently and an enormous Sunday crossword yesterday, of course. So I'm looking forward to solving what should be a relatively breezy grid. And this hopefully relatively breezy edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Quotidia File, Overfull Hitbox, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Showmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are sustaining this channel and keeping this whole thing going. And it's a new month, which means there's a new New York Times um, bonus puzzle to solve for patrons of the Patreon channel. Look forward to that if you're a patron. If you'd like to become a patron like those five I mentioned, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And all of those bonus videos include all the previous monthly bonus puzzles published by the New York Times, as well as um, everything else that goes up there, like the weekly mini puzzle speed solves, the um, boss words competition league themeless puzzles, and the various other things that I put up um, depending on the time of year, I suppose. And uh, thank you if you are a patron. I really do appreciate it. As a benefactor, you can get the Let's Check the Crosses official mug as well. Uh, all right. And do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not gotten around to that. I do appreciate it if you've done so. We recently crossed 12,000 members. So we hit another sort of, I don't know, thousand delineation milestone. That was really nice to see. Thank you if you are among those 12,000. And Finally, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field to that as well. Nice, friendly chat community. All right, let's get on to today's crossword for May 1st, which has been constructed by Alina Abidi and Matthew Stock. I think it's maybe the second crossword for Alina Abidi, and uh, Matthew Stock is responsible for a couple of dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Frequent San Francisco weather phenomenon. Well, as a longtime San Franciscan, uh, I'm aware that this is the fog. Kind of music that may feature a mandolin. Folk music often features a mandolin. And rest spot for a camel. An oasis, of course, in a desert. Took me longer than it needed to. Pig's sound is what? Uh, is this obvious? Rower's implement is an oar. A groan? Is it? No. What is this? What does a pig do? <laughs> University that required Shaq's number 33. <laughs> Embarrassingly, the first thing that came to mind was LSE, the London School of Economics, which is not the answer. It is presumably LSU, Louisiana State University, I guess. And then pig sound is a grunt. Of course, pig's grunt. I don't know why that didn't come to mind. Cry in a checkers game could be king me. Boy, I have not played checkers in probably decades. And then, so when you turn a when you... How does that work? Is it when you, when do you become a king? I actually don't remember. Is it when you capture a piece or no, it must be less common than that. You get to the other side of the board. Is it? Maybe it's that. I think it might be that. Anyway, a shot in the dark could be a stab. I took a stab. I took a shot in the dark. Psychologically manipulated in a way gaslit named for the, the film of the same name, which I think actually itself was named for a a stage play. Anyway, it's a great film if you've not seen it and you're you've no, and if you've never really considered the origin of the phrase to gaslight somebody to kind of psychologically manipulate them in this particular way. Um, it comes directly from what happens in that film. It's very worth watching. Afro-Cuban ballroom dance. Um, I always forget which one of these we need in a particular case. Samba. Afro-Cuban. What did I say? Afro-Caribbean. Afro-Cuban ballroom dance. Uh, corporate grind. Oh, here's our theme. We have these italicized clues, which are going to be linked together in some way. Oh, that's oh, that's interesting. Here we have ballroom dance. I guess that's unrelated to the samba thing. Um, okay. Well, I don't know what those are, what that's all about yet, but we'll get there eventually. Clear headed could be sane, perhaps, and Greek S could be sigma. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Goes the famous saying from, I don't know, maybe a radio show originally. Future PhD's test is the GRE. I'm not sure if this is correct. Opens as an awards show envelope. Oh, this isn't Samba, it's Roomba. Un, 
seals an awards show envelope. Okay, so this is presumably an R. The corporate grind is the rat race. There we go. Okay, so are these going to be sort of idioms using animals then? Probably. What is this? Aquatic migration sometimes aided by a fabricated ladder. Yes, a salmon... Um, oh, what? I mean, you could have a salmon ladder. A salmon spawn? A salmon... What is this called? I'm not sure. Oh, that's frustrating. Sort of aware of the phenomenon, but I can't think of what the name for it is. Hybrid fighting short for sport, uh, for short, is mixed martial arts, MMA. And I'm intrigued. Ooh, you might say, maybe. Musician Yoko, here we go. She was just in the puzzle yesterday or the day before. One of the official solo uh, music artists of the New York Times crossword, Yoko Ono. And cow sound is moo. Haven't seen that. Internet pioneer with a purple logo. Must be Yahoo. And uh, disinfect disinfectant spray brand. Is it Lysol? It's a sort of citrus smelling disinfectant, I think. And investigative reporter Pharaoh, Ronin Pharaoh, conducted some of the Me Too reporting, I think. And then Salmon. Hmm. Oh, I misspelled rat race. I'm sorry. Just realized that. Goats. Oh, and it's good because I didn't ever read this clue. Goats bleat is ma. There we go. Don't know where rat race uh, rice came from. Organization supporting individual rights could be the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. And against the direction of August is Upwind, College Sports Channel, probably ESPNU for ESPN University. Oh, is it a salmon run? Um, so right, ESPN is a, is a U.S. Um, sports network on television, and this would be their collegiate edition or whatever. Skylight, e.g., is a form of window. So salmon run, Okay. Rat race, salmon run, and those are both run, race and run are sort of relevant. So maybe the idioms are even more specific than what I had in mind originally. Ballroom dance in 4-4 four, four time. So 4-4 four, four time is common time. It's the most normal, it's, it's the most sort of just common and ordinary uh, musical meter, but it's not what a waltz would be, for instance. It's not, not all dance music is 4-4. Four, four. Ballroom dance in 4-4 four, four time. I don't know very much about ballroom dance, to be honest with you. What about this one? Platform at the center of a fashion show, a catwalk. There we go. Yes, so once again, we have an animal idiom involving movement. Race, run, walk. Okay. Trot, a foxtrot. There we go. That was that was what I needed was that, that movement verb. Okay. Or I guess these could be, these are nouns in this case, I suppose. Uh, core building exercise that starts on all fours. Um, is it a yoga thing? I'm not sure. Or maybe a stretch, core building exercise. I'm not sure. What would be race, run, trot, walk, crawl? That it's crawl. Oh, these are in decreasing, are these in decreasing order of speed, roughly? I mean, I think it's arguable in some cases, race versus run, but there might be that might be a, an official thing in some in some context. I don't know. Race, run, trot, walk, crawl. Those do seem to decrease in speed to me. At least you could certainly read them that way. Interesting. Detroit-based truck maker, GMC. And fa fair or foul collar would be an ump, an umpire in a baseball game. Kind of salad made with fresh mozzarella, tomato, and basil is caprese salad, which is a, a delicious dish. And got milk and I'm loving it for two. Those are uh, slogans, sort of marketing slogans. One for milk by the, I don't know, milk board or whoever promotes milk. And then the other for McDonald's. Play, oops, play periods after the buzzer informally are OTs for overtimes. The informally just indicates that we're going to abbreviate this answer. A bit of udon or ramen. Those are Japanese noodles. So one bit of them would be a noodle. And a matchmaking site with a willing to convert profile option. That's interesting. It must be a religious, uh, well, date. It must be a religious site. J-Date for Jewish Jewish dating is something. That's fascinating that you can join this as a non, non-Jew non and say, I'm willing to convert. That's really interesting. Handle the tunes at a party, say. DJ, disc jockey, DJ at the party. Comic DeGeneres is Ellen DeGeneres. 
And faked out in hockey is deked. I've seen that before. Um, so sort of like juked out of the way. And then crew necked shirt, or, or sort of fainted, I guess, maybe more accurately. Uh, crew necked shirt informally is a T, a T shirt. And then command that may be accompanied by a whoosh sound, maybe sending an email. Slip and slide is a phrase. And if slide were capitalized, I suppose it's also a commercial name for that. Um, I don't know what you call it. That's sort of. Uh, plastic, slippery, uh, long strip that you slide down, children slide down. Magician's stick is a wand. And a man for all seasons is, um, I think, a play and then an adapted film about Thomas More. Um I hope I'm not misremembering which which figure that is. Uh, shoot over a message sometime. Email me, I suppose. Maybe you'll get that whoosh sound when you do so. Sculptures made at the beach, say, are sand castles, sand some things. It's plural. And so on. Maybe it's not. And so on could be et cetera. So native to is endemic to. If something's endemic to an area, it's native to it. So... Sand lot, sculpt skinned. On the lamb, if you're fleeing, you're on the lamb. And radiologist scan for short, could be an MRI. Oh, sand art, right, art being a sort of collective noun that, you know, is innumerable. Okay, there we go. So, okay, I think that's all, I think we've seen all of the answers down here. Yes, we have. Okay, so many a Times Square visitor is a tourist, that's certainly a very touristic uh, part of New York City. And prefix with dynamic could be aerodynamic. Balanced is fair, maybe? So what is this core building exercise that starts on all four? A oh, bear crawl. Bear crawl. That sounds very plausible. So balanced is even. And Arizona athlete for short. Oh, I've, uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks, believe it or not, I have... I have heard of them. So there we go. I'm D-backs. I think I know that. Same here. You could say, so have I. This is the kind of clue when you say same here. That could be so many things. As as have I. As do I. Um, as do I. You know, I mean, so do I. But it, you have to just end up getting it from the length and the crosses. So it could be as or do. I don't know which. <clears throat> Lowest military rank. A private Ensign? Oh, oh, sorry, not low at lowest, lowish. Maybe a sergeant. Food purveyors are grocers. Yes, it does look like sergeant, doesn't it? So this is so have I. And then gold in Granada is aura, I would think, for gold in Spanish. And, or oro, masculine, I guess. And then bun war high on the head is a top knot. And a little jump is a hop. There we go. Renee Zellweger's role in Chicago, uh, Roxy. I've never actually seen Chicago, but I've, I've, I've heard at least enough of this song to be able to hear it in my head right now when she sings about herself, Roxy. The Girl on the Train, 2015 best-selling novel. I remember that. And Shirks is avoids. You shirk work, you avoid work. Here we have Jekyll and Pepper for two, Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Pepper. So one literary figure and one beverage brand. Social blunder is a gaff, and soap that's said to be 99.4400. What is this? What does this mean? Is it meant to be 99.44 out of 100% pure? What? It, I don't quite understand what it, mathematically what this what this means. Anyway, it's a soap that's meant to be very pure, I guess, that it's ivory. It must be ivory soap. Casual workday is Friday, and got a good look at somebody's eye to them. Uh, the clue's number divided by three is nine, because 27 is the clue's number, and divided by three, that's nine. Veni, vidi, vici lang language is Latin. That's the famous, I came, I saw, I conquered. And uh, without company is alone. Unwanted plant in a garden could be a weed. And before we fill that out, let's just look at the crosses. Buckle up. It's the law, you could say, as you're making a quick getaway and you're going to be on the lamb, wherever that was. 
drink hidden in tea leaves. We have the word ale hidden literally inside of the letters of, it's easier to see over here actually, um, inside the letters of tea leaves, ale is spelled out. And finally, the sticky part of a free tree frog would be its uh, toe by which it is able to climb the tree. So let's fill this in and there we go. A relatively gentle solve for a Monday, which is what we want, and a nice theme that I think had this sort of extra element of slowing down over the course of the uh, of our sort of metaphorical run. And also, actually, this is a vertically symmetrical crossword, which we've had a few of recently. Uh, we had one yesterday as well. And uh, all that means is that if you were to uh, bisect the grid vertically, you could sort of fold it over and the black cells would be disposed in identical positions. And that's just notable because mostly, most of the time, these puzzles are radially symmetrical. So they're not they're not symmetrical around a kind of uh, sort of folded bisection like that. They're uh, symmetrical around a rotation. 180 degrees is typically how they're symmetrical. So it's always notable, I suppose. It sticks out when puzzles aren't that way. And uh, so let's go over our theme clues quickly again. We had the corporate grind of the rat race, the aquatic migration, sometimes aided by a fabricated ladder of the salmon run, the um, ballroom dance in 4-4 time is a foxtrot, the platform at the center of a fashion show is a catwalk, and finally the core building exercise that starts on all fours is the bear crawl. And I was a bit surprised by salmon run because this is the only case in which I think the literal and metaphorical meaning are the same. I mean, there isn't, I guess what I mean is, well, there isn't really even a metaphorical meaning here. Whereas a rat race, you're talking about people, but we're using rats as a metaphor. The foxtrot, again, you're talking about uh, dancers and the fox is, is a, you know, a metaphor in some way. Uh, same with a catwalk and a bear crawl. Whereas in the salmon run, I think we're literally talking about actual fish here, unless there's some idiomatic meaning of Salmon Run that I don't know. So it just sort of slightly breaks the pattern that these other ones have in using these animals for metaphorical means. But yeah, I could be missing something there. Anyway, a very nicely constructed theme with our rat, salmon, fox, cat, and bear um, traveling at what seemed to me to be decreasing speeds down the grid. And uh, there we go. That was a nice puzzle. So not waste any more time because there are actually quite a few clues from yesterday's puzzle to read, um, which stands to reason given the enormous Sunday grid. So let's get going. Rhett Boy 1 explains regarding the patent awarded to Abraham Lincoln. I was not aware he was awarded a patent until yesterday, but apparently he received a patent in 1849 for a device that was designed to lift boats over shoals. Apparently he received the patent, but the invention was never actually manufactured. That's very interesting. I had no idea. Nix Hicks points out an example of a trick ending, which I was wondering, is that simply a twist ending? And she gives a more specific example, such as in the movie Clue, which sort of proposes, but here's what really happened after some hypothetical ending. So it's sort of a trick ending in that it's not even just a twist, it's that the ending itself actually literally changes. Uh, Gabriella Timblin explains groin vaults are used in architecture. They are two barrel vaults intersected at their right angles sort of like a four-way passage. That's interesting. I can imagine that in my head in a sort of catacombs kind of scenario. Um, Chris Carrison points out, that, so I, Sebastian Coe, the athlete, I had said, oh, he's either a lord or he's a knight, and I couldn't remember which. And Chris Carrison points out, Sebastian Coe is rarely both a lord and a knight. Indeed, that is unusual. You don't usually get that in the in the UK sort of honor system because they're they're different they're different things and they fun they work differently in a sort of functional way because um if you're made a lord you're actually essentially made a, a, a legislator you're made a politician in the sense that you sit in the house of lords which is a um, a legislative body with less power than it used to have but still a legislative body nonetheless um and it's unusual a, a knighting is more ceremonial so anyway there we have it uh Michael Tamburino explains, Enya performed the song, May It Be, which played during the credits of The Fellowship of the Ring. It contains phrases in Quenya, a fictional elvish language created by Tolkien. She, re she received an Oscar nomination for the track. That's very interesting, and that's what I would have, what I would have basically expected, but it's fascinating nonetheless. And finally, Brian Spurrier explains that golf irons are classified as 
1 to 3 being long, 4 to 6 being mid, and 7 to 9 being short. There we go. I think we had a mid yesterday, and I was not familiar with that terminology. And Brian also points out that <laughs> literally no one has called it this in around 400 years, but cosine, the trig trigonometric function, is technically short for the Latin form of complementary sine. So I guess you could say it is abbreviated. Or maybe all of us are just thinking about this more than the person who wrote it. Who knows? Um, yes, I did not know that. So, but it makes sense that it, that cosine itself would be an abbreviation in some sense. It's it's tough to say if um, that was actually what was being intended by the clue. Probably not. But it's very interesting to know. And there we have it. That is today's video. And that brings today's um, uh, crossword and edition of this series to an end. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday crossword, another themed puzzle that shouldn't be too tricky. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.